Hi, welcome to Crypto Kids. We're here to teach children and parents about cryptocurrency. I'm Charlie, age eight, and I have some special guests coming in in the studio with me today. Please welcome Tom. Hey, Charlie. What hints and tips do you have for an eight-year-old like me? It's a great question, actually. I, th I would say the fact that you're even asking that question is a great first step. Um, I would continue doing all your research that you're doing, everything that you're learning about blockchain, because it's important to learn about all these new technologies as they come up. Um, and keep inspiring yourself, because I know you love drawing, and I know you love artwork, um, and you're getting really good at it as well. So I think, this is, I think you're on your way to becoming uh, an absolute professional in this industry. You're doing the right things. Thanks for that information, Tom. <laughs> and hello, Vanessa. I've created all of this artwork, which is unfortunately two pieces, and I was wondering how I could turn it into NFTs? Sure. So can you tell me a little bit of what, what inspired you uh, to, to make them to begin with? Why were you making them? Well, this one, I thought, like, I usually do, like, easy steps like this one, like a main character that, like, very well known. But I thought I might try create something that's actually, like, living as an animal, but in a different type of version. Wow. Can I see? So, let me have a look. <clears throat> that's really good, Charlie. Uh, because what I would say is, like, if you... If you started playing about with technology, like you might scan that drawing inside of a computer, then you might use it with Photoshop, or you might look at some tutorials of how to use After Effects or something like that to make it into a motion animal now, and then uh, kind of tell a story with it. Something that is truly inspiring to you, something that you consider to be really, really fun. So start, because. NFT really means, it's, it's kind of like a glorified receipt, really. NFT is what it points to. And if it points to what your real inspiration is and who you are and what you would like to contribute to the world, then all the rest of the steps come really easy. Then you can just go to uh, YouTube or something like that and Google, how do I make an NFT? And maybe it's OpenSea or different kinds of platforms. And how do I open a wallet like MetaMask? And those are the things that you require. But I think you start from why you were inspired to make that. And what do you want to show the world that is uniquely you so that people would want to be a part of your uh, thing? Okay, that is very good advice. Thank you for that. And one more question for you, though. If I wanted to do that in the future, if it gets, like, let's say it goes worldwide and it becomes very popular, but it's like a one original game, do I have to probably change the first main part of that? Or do I keep the same thing but make a change in the new game? That's a good question, actually. A lot of NFT projects started off as one design with multiple different uh, rarities attached to it. Um, but now they're introducing new features where you can change your NFTs as well and, or upgrade them into something new. Uh, for example, like breeding features. If you had two NFTs, you put them together and then you would get a new NFT off the back of it. So I think actually constantly developing these projects is what keeps the audiences engaged. Uh, it inspires your own creativity because you would start with this and then maybe you would evolve that into another uh, butterfly that would have different colors on it, for example. Or maybe you take it back a step and you start with the caterpillars. You know? So there's a lot of development that you can do within a project itself, even after it's launched, um, to make sure that the people uh, are getting the best artwork from you, of course, uh, and the best utility out of the project itself. That's great advice. But one more thing, if you chose yourself without any other advice and chose to make a new version of the original, would you want to sell that for what it's worth? Or would you want to restart that and then sell the old things from the original thing you made from it, and then after you sell those, you make it into new things by upgrading different types of stuff and into the game. Yeah, I think this probably comes into uh, when people create a project and they talk about creating like a one of one mm. um, versus creating like t a thousand of the same artwork. Can you speak of your experience on things like that? Yeah, I mean, um, um, people now consider that it's quite, um, that the one of ones are really valuable because they're so scarce. But I would say that if you have a masterpiece, 
it would be better to have a one of 10 of a masterpiece than a mediocre one of one. So it really, um, th that's so amazing that you're <laughs> into crypto at this point and you start to have these value conversations because it's so far removed from how I experienced the whole thing as a kid. I mean, of course you do different kinds of trading of like cards and whatever, but this takes you into such a realm of asking these questions is such, like you were saying, that was a brilliant thing. It's like, the fact that you're asking these questions now is going to make your life is going to be like super set. And any kid like you who is in this kind of field at this moment in time, just asking those questions is what's going to get uh, like you. You'll know the best after you kind of just spend time thinking about it and playing about with it. Yeah. And what we're talking about here is uh, current NFT projects that we've seen and that we know about. However, going forward, you might even create your own NFT project with its own utility behind it. So, for example, if you were to create a certain set of artwork, but the purpose was that that artwork can then be used within a game that we build in the future at Helicon, um, that's pretty cool because you're getting a cool piece of artwork, but I'm saying in a couple of months' time, you're going to be able to use this character within the game and play as this avatar or use this weapon in the game or use these coins within the game itself. And then suddenly you've got what we call interoperability, uh, which means it's not just a piece of artwork. It can be used in multiple different ways and have different functions. So these are the things that we can start talking about and creating games that you love to play with characters that you love to draw. Wow. And also, one more thing, I saw your, I saw your NFT, that monkey picture, it's going to be a costume on Amazon, people. Make sure you sell it. <laughs> Only 50 quid. <laughs> Only well, 50 quid. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> My next question is for Eddie and Devin. I'm a big gamer and I really love playing games like Minecraft and Roblox. And how do NFT games and how am I able to make money from them? Yeah, yeah. Fantastic question. Um, NFT games can, can come in a few different forms, right? Because as we said before, NFTs is kind of, you, you own it, right? So let's say in Minecraft, you make your diamond sword. You go through all the work, you make the diamond sword, you enchant it, like it's, it's really cool, but you don't necessarily own it at the moment because it's on your computer, but let's say the servers go down at some point, you just wouldn't have your diamond sword anymore. Whereas blockchain games, you then own it. Go for it, yeah, yeah? Wait a sec, I think I know what you're saying, because I think I might have seen something that was like based on how NFTs work, because like most YouTubers, they like, they do these videos where they sell like things like really big Minecraft mansions, and then they become marketplace creators, and they sell it on the marketplace. You're saying that if you did NFTs, I could basically sell that, but instead of selling it for my cons or more valuable items, I could sell it for actual real life money yeah, from the, NFT. The concept is like is is exactly the same. The only difference is the blockchain. So the blockchain is kind of like a information transfer system, right? But it's it's really really like trustworthy. So you can you can trust that you own that mansion or you own that diamond sword. And it's potentially the only one, or potentially there are 10 of them, but you can prove that you own it. And that's what kind of NFTs are in gaming, is you then own what you've actually spent money on or you've spent time creating. So then it's basically like the exact same thing, but just on a different app or device or blockchain or NFT. Yeah, like exactly. Oh. Yeah, no, exactly. And what is the difference about blockchain and and over normal games from like play to earn? Like, what's the difference? Oh, fantastic question. Because play to earn is another way that kind of the crypto blockchain NFT space can integrate with games, right? So. At the moment, you play loads of Minecraft, and you, you'll spend like 10 hours just like playing it nonstop, right? Well, while you're digging down, you're looking for your diamonds, you're going for copper, you know, whatever you're going for. While you're doing that, you could be, in a play-to-earn game, actually generating tokens or generating cryptocurrency. 
you basically you earn it from performing actions in the game. So you, you actually make money from playing games, which is like amazing. And very little difference between blockchain games and standard games. All it is is that blockchain games are verified on the blockchain. So if Minecraft was on the blockchain, it would be a blockchain game. But it would still be the same game. OK, but I'm adding this one in for you. So like, if you already had it, but you still wanted to do the same thing with it, maybe if you wanted to like sell that thing on a different device, could you like, could you probably, let's say, sponsor it in that thing? And then like you show it on Minecraft. And then after you get that thing, after it's already sold, that means after that, it can be like sponsored by NFT or blockchain. So that means it still works the same way. Is that probably what, it, what like maybe an update or something like that would be probably? I think a good way of putting that is uh, how would someone like yourself playing Minecraft extract value out of that game if it was a blockchain game? Um, and Devin's definitely the right person to answer that for you. <laughs> <laughs> So um, essentially the NFTs that you earn in the game or the tokens that you earn from playing the game are tradable on what we call exchanges. So this means that you could take your Minecraft token, for example, and you could go and trade that with someone else for Ethereum or for Bitcoin, which allows you to take that value out of the game for yourself so you can earn an income from it. Actually, wait, thing, quick thing that just popped up in my head. How would it work? So, like, if you had it in the game and you wanted to sell on NFT or blockchain, if you had that item and, you, and you're and you going to sell it, how would you be able to, like, how would you be able to get that item to prove it from that NFT thing if you could, like, if you're playing on, on Xbox or something and you can actually, like, screen back, grab it or anything and if you have proof and you sell it to someone, how will you have a chance to give it to them? Because like, you can't just friend people just to give them items and then keep them friended, right? So how would that work? Well, what would, what would be the difference here between taking a screenshot of something and creating an NFT of that something? So NFTs are essentially like a token on the blockchain. So it's the same as, um, it's essentially represented by a piece of, of, of code or a hash. You can actually prove that you have that, which is different to a photo of something. Right? It's provable ownership. In terms of trading it with people, um, they use things called smart contracts. Mm -hmm. right? And a smart contract means that it's like a digital piece of code. You put your NFT into it, someone else will pay the money for it, and the code will automatically swap it for you. So you know that you are going to get that money for your NFT. Yeah. And you don't necessarily need to know the other person who's buying it. You just need to trust in the blockchain and the secure system. Exactly. Okay, but it also, if they like, if they pay for it, if like, let's say you're the one buying it, you're really excited, and there's a new update with like a sword that has like ice and flame in it, like a natural added fire aspect 3000 <laughs> that isn't even in the game yet, and a natural frost walker boot that give it to you when you need like when you fall on it and you're holding the sword it naturally spawns ice that doesn't break as long as you step on it mm -hmm. yes yeah if that happened and you were buying it could you buy it with like actual nft things like could you for example buy it with blockchain or nft and then when you get that from the person that you're selling it to they could make that nft or blockchain into like real money because the real symbol of blockchain you keep money in it and it gets more valuable so if you mm. put blockchain instead of real money paying into it would that still be ex acceptable I think where you started there was uh, if you were to create a new version of the NFT that's now upgraded from the original one that you've had before, right? Uh, what would then happen to the one that you had before? That was a good question because you have to put something in in order to get something out, right? So if you want to create a new NFT, let's say in Minecraft, you would have to mine some resources. You'd have to put those resources together in order to create something, right? 
But if you wanted to create a higher value item, you would have to have that item plus higher value resources in order to do that. And all of this on the blockchain can be NFTs, right? So each one of those digital assets has a real world value. So for example, in Minecraft, if you spend 10 hours a day going around mining all these resources that I don't have time to go and mine, I could come to you and I can buy those resources off you, or you could decide to use that to upgrade an NFT that you've got within the game. But what you do with it afterwards is entirely up to you. You can play with it, you can sell it, you can try and upgrade it again. <coughs> okay, but what if, like, let's say you try to get really big upgrades and, like, you go too far, like, you try to cheat with it, like, you actually cheat getting that item. Mm, that's a good question. But then, like, how to prove it, like, to show that they're show it's doing real? it fake, how to do that is probably, like, let's say they try to enchant <clears throat> it really good, yeah? Let's say NFT in the future with an update, it could have an update that, like, when you sell it, you have to put the information of, like, the account to see on that world if yes. you like actually have achievements turned off because like right, if you so have them turned off that means you you <laughs> right, so Charlie, we've got to do one question at a time here so the first question that you're saying here is how do you prove that what you're buying from that person is real how do you know that they didn't fake it right and that's a really good question uh, how, how does that work on the blockchain I mean how, how do I know that what you've created isn't something that's fake or non-generated so when you create something on the blockchain, when you, it's called minting, the action of minting automatically puts it on the blockchain. So as soon as it's created, you know that that is the person that created it. So you can't, and the not cheating thing comes down to, you know, making sure that your game is secure, making sure that people can't hack it, making sure that you've gotten rid of the bugs that are going to break it, right? So that, that's our job as game designers, is to make sure everything's fair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's good information to add in, but that wasn't, like, my main question, actually. What it was is that, like, let's say to prove it, maybe if, like, let's say NFT, it probably needs to update because, like, think of it this way. You sell it, but, like, I think that would be better to show the proof of how long you've been on that game for because, like, let's say you were, it would take, a few days to actually get that item you would have to show how many days you've been on it for to do that and show that your achievements were on to get actually get that otherwise it proved that you were in creative and also in creative that's why i'm saying this because in creative like everything's free you can free build you can fly anything's possible and you and if NFT doesn't probably check that, maybe they could just go into creative and then they could get that item, upgrade it really good, like with fire respect and just do all that and then sell it while putting themselves back to survival before okay, they do So that. before we wrap up here, what's the question on that one? In creative mode, what you're saying is that you want to be able to show in these games how long someone's been playing to prove that that's why they have the item they have? Yeah, because, like, let's say you could ask Nintendo to do an update, like, where you save the progress of the days you've been in, and it shows, like, incomplete how you could do that, but there's a selection to say, like, how much you've been playing it for one day, or a month, or, right. or okay. a year, or okay, a few. Okay, I see. Okay, so this is going to have to be our last question, but that is where I believe you guys come in as developers, right? That's the kind of functionality that would be worked into the game. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, is, there, is that something that would be necessary within a game to show how long someone's been playing, do you think? So there, there are loads of different ways to do it. You could do it on time, but you could also just say that things that are created in creative mode in Minecraft are, like, named and tagged creative, and then those items can't be made NFTs. Mm. So you have to earn the items in your standard mode, and then creative can't create them, can't create NFTs. That would be a way to fix that issue. Mm -hmm. A very good question. Good question. Right, that's it. Thanks that's all the time that. we've got. Are we going to do a... Thanks for that information. Yes, <laughs> very good questions, Charlie. And uh, we're going to be building a lot of games, and I'm going to need a lot of your input, I think, in how to build them. Don't worry. i got big brain on this. <laughs> 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 all right. Well done. Well, thanks for joining us. We had a lot of fun explaining all this. I hope you have that in your notebook. You're going to need it. Thanks a lot. And, well... See you.
बाय